Welcome to the stage, all the way from England, Russell Howard! Hello! Yes, Melbourne, yes! What a country! I bet you're wondering, how am I standing on stage in front of thousands without being arrested as a super spreader? Well... New Zealand and Australia are COVID-free, the only places in the world I could do stand-up. So, after two weeks in quarantine, I was back on stage, in front of people, actual people, stepping into a future we're all craving, before sharing my experience across this joyous land. And it is joyous. This time, I'm in Australia. It feels like you're the sort of Willy Wonka of Crocs. Hanging out with wonderful people. I love it here, I really do. With my Aussie film crew as my guide, I'm going to experience the underbelly of this magnificent land. You don't realise how funny you are. Weird, but funny. I might get laid after I think you're going to get laid. So here we are in Australia, the Trans-Tasman bubble opened, which means, uh, it sounds like a sort of disease, doesn't it? Trans-Tasman, I've got a Trans-Tasman bubble made. But basically, you can travel from New Zealand to Australia and you don't have to quarantine. So we can be uh, in amongst Aussies, uh, which is one of my favorite places to be. I love them. We got here two days ago. We did the first gig, no pressure, but the first two gigs have been amazing, but you seem good already. But I'm walking to the gig and my phone goes off. It's it a text message. It goes, have you recently been in New Zealand? I was like, yes. <laughs> they said, you need to self-isolate. I said, I've had many tests. He said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you need to self-isolate until you have another test. This was with like an hour to go before a gig. So there were people like marching in. We had to leg it to a hospital, find somebody, have the old test in. <laughs> 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 Negative. We're fucking allowed to do it. At one point, I genuinely thought, hang on a minute here, I'm going to give ScoMo a handjob, just anything. <laughs> ScoMo's there, Prime Minister, in case you're wondering. My Aussie adventure begins in New South Wales, home to the Blue Mountains, Byron Bay and Bondi Beach. And I'm off to Sydney to hang out with a bloke I would give a handjob to, the fabulous Tim Minchin. We're going to chat Aussie culture. Let's hug it up. Isn't this nice? Look, we'll be able to do this. Of hugs. He's amazing. Tim's a comedian, actor, writer, musician, and songwriter. He's won Olivier Awards for his musicals, and he is fiercely protective of his homeland. I know people who are actually like, oh, I wouldn't go to Australia. And I'm like, why not? And it's just too dangerous. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. what, are you, what are you talking about? It's like, they're literally, they think it's too... And Americans think that too. When I lived in the Hollywood Hills, I saw a rattlesnake the first day I was there and coyote coming. There's a fucking mountain lion that used to come down my street and eat cats. And I was like, you guys think Australia's too dangerous. And like, n nearly, if you asked a hundred of these people, most of them would never have seen a snake. Yeah. You know, they would have got a red back spider and had to spray it once, you know. Yeah. Like, it's just absurd. I love hanging out with him. Probably the, he's probably the cleverest bloke I know. And he's got a lovely way of sort of dispensing his wisdom. And we were chatting about sort of Aussie slang and the way you speak. So I would say to you, I'm not pissing in your pocket, mate. Yeah. But you're a fantastic musician. Yeah. Is that not in English, then? No. Ah. But it's fascinating when you think about the places that language come from, you know? There's all sorts of, like, blowing smoke up your ass. No one's ever done that. Or you've done that. Yeah, there was... I just heard blowing smoke up your ass. You went, yes. Have you... There was one time. I mean, I'm going to have to press you about that time. Blowing smoke up your ass? Well, this is the fascinating thing. So it's obviously from the American blowing smoke up your ass, which is madness. You would never do that. But again, even if you really admired someone, totally. you wouldn't blow any smoke. Why do you be physically impossible, wouldn't it? Oh no, we could get, it. we could make it happen. Take some work. I came across a phrase that I'd never heard in my life that doesn't exist anywhere else but this magical land. We ordered some food. The food arrived quite quickly. I said to the waiter, "Geez, that was quick," and he said, "Mate." I didn't come here to fuck spiders. It just means we're not here to muck around. 
So, like, if you had said, should we put some burgers on the barbie, I'd be like, definitely, we're not here to fuck spiders. Yeah. I don't want to seem prudish and overly British, but if I saw someone banging a spider, <laughs> my first wouldn't thought of anything else. Someone's got a frivolous work ethic. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd call HR, I'd be like, yeah, Samantha, it's Darren again. He's balls deep in a tarantula. <laughs> but I like it. I think you should take it home and make sure it's spread around the aisle. Yeah. I didn't know until I came here that you don't have shrimps on the barbie. <laughs> he went, we don't have shrimps on the barbie, dickhead. <laughs> That's what the advert should be. Well, all countries have cliches. You know, if you ever ask an American to sort of describe England, that hasn't, that's not an Anglophile, that hasn't been there much. Yeah. They'll be like, all right, go, like, all right. right. That, literally, that's how they think. And then they're like, maybe a post box and maybe a policeman and fucking chim chimney. Yeah. Like, it's just absurd. It would be the equivalent of you lot going, oh my God, have you heard about England? <gasps> They've got a Russian speaking meerkat. <laughs> And they live in a stately home. <laughs> and get this, they sell car insurance. <laughs> You're going to England, aren't you? Yeah, if everything goes as planned, uh, you know, I'll be there in late October. But one thing we'll, I think we can guarantee, I genuinely mean this, I'm not pissing in your pocket, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, but I think when you do those gigs in October, I, I think there could be something else. I yeah. think that. There has been such a pent-up desire to have a night out yeah. with people I yeah. love, to watch yeah. a guy do something I love. Yeah. It yeah. could be. Yeah. It could be. I might amazing. get laid after. I all. think you're gonna get <laughs> yeah. laid. Yeah. I think. Laid. Right. I love that. There you go. Shrimp. Should we hug Hugs. again? Yeah. One last hug. And then we'll go swim, and we'll hug in the water. <laughs> After a quick towel down, we hit the road, off to the majestic Queensland. I'm very excited today. What do we know about Aussies? Excellent at surfing, excellent at cricket, and fantastic at getting shit-faced. Yes, they are. So I'm off to one of the most famous watering holes in the land. So today, I'm really excited because we're going to a pub, an actual pub. You know pubs full of old, pissed, weird men? <laughs> oh, it takes me back to my childhood, you know? <laughs> I grew up in the 90s, man, where kids were still in pubs, just walking around eating crisps. <laughs> we used to sit in the car park because our parents got pissed. We'd just be sat there and then a weirdo would come out and talk to us. <laughs> I still love that, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I remember my uncle, when I'm 10, coming up to me going, see this here? He had a pint of cider in his hand. Oh, I could drink three of these, kill you, and not know I'd done it. <laughs> so, apparently, there's this, uh, this pub that's called the Banana Bender Pub. Now, I didn't know that um, a, a banana bender is an insult for people from Queensland. Can you explain that? What's the etymology behind that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well that, that'd be the best answer. You know. uh, I mean, ban bananas are grown in Queensland. Yep. Uh, you know, <laughs> what, 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 what are you good at? Bending bananas? Right. But Look, it's... you must be talking about that pub. It used to be called the Edamoga pub, is that right? That's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course it is, you're driving me there. I'm off to meet the locals, including the man who built the original pub, Lindsay Cooper. Hello. Hey. hey. Gentlemen, how are we? Hey. How are you? I'm Russell, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Clive. Clive, nice to meet you. Tomo. Tomo. Coop. Coop, nice to meet you, fellas. What's your surname? My surname is Howard. Howard? Yeah. Howard. But Howard would be probably kind of you. Yeah, Howie, does that work? It'd be very un-Australian if you didn't have a nickname. Nicknames are glorious. We caught my friend Tom having a poo in the woods. It was already a good day. And <laughs> Jason pointed at him and went, Forest Dump. That <laughs> is such a good nickname. <laughs> when his mum found out about it, she started calling him Forrest. <laughs> he was late for his wedding. His own mum went, Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> it's not just nicknames. Years ago, these lunatics got so pissed, they came up with an idea 
to race toilets. Back in the day, we, we, we opened on the 24th of November, 89. February 26th of January, January. And so we had to come up with something that was stupid yeah. and funny. Yeah. And what's better than racing the shit out? <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So, so Keith built the original, <laughs> he built the original dunnies. Yeah. Back in the old days, they were, they were outhouses because when I was born, we didn't have a toilet inside. Yeah. It was as far away from the house as you possibly could. But because that's, that still exists in Australia. What the fuck is wrong with having a toilet inside the cafe? <laughs> All the great places, not on nice streets, down alleys that stink of piss. <laughs> and then you go for a toilet, you go, excuse me, where's the box? They give you a map and a hubcap. <laughs> so suddenly you're going on a quest. <laughs> and I said to this lady, I was like, excuse me, why have we got such a big hubcap attached to the key? And she went, what if someone steals it? <laughs> I've got to see them. Can we go and see them? Let's go and see them. Right, right. I love that. Yeah, yeah. We didn't just see them. We had a race. <laughs> Let the fan hit the shit house buggy thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Banana Vendor Pub on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland for an impromptu running of our legendary dunny races. <laughs> Sad. Go! Oh, they're just coming up Heartbreak Hill now, folks. The long drop on the left has been a little bit slow to start. Howie and Skidmarks has left something on the road. The long drop is the winner today. You're right, Jeff. Well done, Jeff. Howie, but it's a consolation prize there for you. We do nothing in halves down under. That should get you through the next sitting or two. Thank you very much. Every day. There you go. Where's their trophy? The trophy, you got it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Hold it along. Hold it along. <laughs> right, hey, let's go back to the bar. After the break, find out why I held a koala and why I said this. I'm wearing a condom. Don't yeah. worry about it. I don't know if you're aware, there's a pandemic going on, Britain's struggling. You're not, you dealt with it, Scomo's. He's like, close the airports. You want to come here? You've got to stay in a hotel for two weeks? Oh, I don't care how good you are at tennis, mate. <laughs> what an amazing story that was. <laughs> but what if I get bored? You play tennis? <laughs> if anyone can deal with monotony, <laughs> It's tennis players. <laughs> How will I live? <laughs> My existence is normally so varied. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to do this for a living, you can sit on your ass for two weeks, you jammy bastard. One thing that fascinates me about this vast country is its incredible wildlife, around 90% of which are unique to Australia. The best place to see some of these creatures is Australia Zoo, and there's no better guide than super celebrity Robert Irwin, who's inherited his energy and enthusiasm for the animal world from his dad, legendary crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin. We're off to see the Irwins. We're spending time with Robert Irwin. I didn't know that he's sort of taken over the mantle of his, uh, his dad's uh, kind of empire. The thing about Steve Irwin was, I thought, uh, I think like most people, we thought he was taking the piss. Right. Because he was more Aussie than, than yeah. Aussie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mate, this is amazing. Crikey. I can bring crocodiles into the hearts of people. It turns out that was him. You sort of imagine him living in Paul Hogan's ball bag. <laughs> oh, that's how Australian he was. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm having a bath in Foster's. I hung out with Robert Irwin. Robert, Good to meet you. Absolutely. There is a young man who is absolutely in sync with himself. Welcome in to, to this is my home, Australia Zoo, and mm. you've, you've picked a good day for it. I have never met anybody who loves their job more than him. I met him, he's like, fucking hell, good day, mate. Hey, go. <laughs> oh! Do you like animals? Not as much as you. Is that it? I thought first up, we could start with something a little bit more slow moving. Do you want to tickle a turtle? That was the first thing he said to me. Do you want to tickle a turtle? I said, I've never really thought about it, Robert. Come on in. 
Come on in. Nice. Hello, we'll mate. leave the food here. Sometimes they need to wake up. You know, they've got to get a bit of a Hello. massage. Look, I know it's a tortoise, but, you know, I thought you said turtle. Sorry. But even through this shell, they've got nerve endings all the way through here, and he can feel absolutely everything. So notice when I give him a pat, he kind of rises up like that. Yeah. He's getting excited. He's really, really enjoying that. So I'm dropping this turtle up, and the turtle's like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, there's something really lovely. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I guess it's like your dog or your cat at home. You, you know when they... When they're, but you know, it's fine, isn't it, to say that enjoying. I'm a cat tickler, but sort of being a tortoise rubber just it's, sounds weird. It sounds a bit odd. <laughs> that does sound a bit odd. And then he's like, mate, do you like koala bears? I said, not really. So I'm scared. I'm scared of most things. I'm English. You know, I'm afraid of rabbits. <laughs> As in the bunnies, not the sex toys. <laughs> just... <laughs> so I've got a koala yeah. to show you, but first up, check this guy out. Hey, big boy. It's like hanging out with Mowgli, it's amazing. What's going on? This big boy Hello. is Rhino, and he's a rhinoceros iguana. Wow. And he is the oldest living rhinoceros iguana in the world. Come on in, you can give him a pat if you want. Yeah. He's very bitey, oh, so well, I'd, stay, I'd stay away from that. You all right, mate? Just stare at the camera right now, because yeah. this is a great Tinder profile <laughs> for you. This should really work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> there you go, big boy. Sorry about that. I Not in the slightest, mate. So I, love, but I love how passionate you are. It's, look at this. All right. You're right. Koalas, let's do it. She's great. Hello. Good luck. Hold you. Oh. Good luck. <laughs> oh, God. And you can bring your hand up onto his back and give him a hug if you like. Oh, that's. There, there you go. go. It feels like a very strange backpack. <laughs> Hello. Oh, oh God. Right, it's like when you're getting a wet shave. Do you know what I mean? When it goes near your neck, you're like, this could be it. He's, <laughs> he's going to bite my neck. And I was afraid, you know, because I'm English and this koala's got all these sort of claws and I'm sort of scared. And you just think, oh, he's going to flip and it's going to be all over the news. And I... <laughs> so, unfortunately, the biggest threat to koalas now is, is chlamydia. Koala chlamydia is Luckily, I'm, rife. I'm wearing a condom. Don't yeah. worry about it. I backed up before the shot. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was safer for you, yeah. it's safer for the koala. Yeah. We get asked that every day. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't Sorry. ready for that. No, no. <laughs> Um, well, that's good. I had to good. sellotape it on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> Moving on, I'm flustered now. And then Robert goes, oh, mate, do you want to see what happens when I do the mating call? And I'm like, not really. Robert. <laughs> and he's like, OK, yeah, cool, here we go. That's it, there you wow. go. The koala starts going, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's not do that again. Yeah. <laughs> and I started freaking out, going, Robert, please, get him off me! Help me! Oh, oh my Look eucalyptus. Oh, he's interested. Oh, oh, oh. Is that it? No? Uh, I'm not sure if he knows it's a mate. He's like, what the heck is this? <laughs> this, must a, this must be a new girl I was in town. impressed. That was pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> it feels like you're the sort of Willy Wonka of Crocs. That's a good way of putting it. Next up, we're off to meet Graham, a 55 stone crocodile. I'm not cuddling him. All right, so he's coming out now. Here we go. Um, and I'll show you the absolute danger zone is actually getting in the water with the croc. So once you're in their environment, once you're in the water with them, you can notice here as I splash around, as I stamp my feet on the bottom of his pond, he can pick up on those vibrations and actually hone in for a good strike. So you can see at the moment, he's not making a ripple on the surface and he's lining up. Come on, Graham. Good boy. Up here, mate. Oh, Ooh. my God. Good boy, Graham. I don't think he was looking at the food for that one. It just feels like any second he's going to leap up. So what we're going to demonstrate here is what's called a tail walk, where a croc can actually come up vertically out of the water here you go, Graham. How do you, mate? <laughs> that was Come incredible. Good, good. Pretty cool, isn't it? Isn't he just a gorgeous croc? He's I don't know again. if he's gorgeous. Just amazing. I think we're going to actually head out to Africa. Um, nice. Have we got enough petrol? We'll <laughs> see how we go, mate. Yeah. Now, here's a question. Yes. Uh, you're 17, right? I am. Um, do you, uh, have you got a girlfriend? No, no. The thing is, I'm 40, he's 17, and I started 
inadvertently talking to him like an old man. I didn't realise. And I'm like, so, well, you got a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell your uncle all about it. And he's like, obviously going, well, I don't want to talk about it with you. <laughs> or on TV. <laughs> this would be an amazing place to bring a girl on a date. <laughs> it would. Tell you what, if I was a girl, you know, I was 17, <laughs> met a bloke who had a zoo. <laughs> and he's like going, what's happening here? <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. I'm not sure you're aware of your power. You're a very attractive man. And he's like, OK, let's just get out of here, shall we? Mind you, if you think I was getting a bit too personal, that is nothing compared to some of the heckles I got on my travels. What are your thoughts on pegging? What are my, what are my thoughts on pegging? <laughs> and see, here's me thinking that you were a slightly conservative bunch. <laughs> I love the fact you've sat through... <laughs> The show and go, is he ever going to get to pegging? <laughs> I believe pegging, if I'm uh, correct, is where the lady puts on a sort of strap on and she makes love to the chap. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like we've got a peggy in. Um, I'll be honest with you, my friend, um, my thoughts on it are very similar to my thoughts on Sprouts of Christmas. I want no business with it. <laughs> if people want to do that, that's their business. I also think the grudges might come out. Do you know what I mean? I think you couldn't be 100% certain that, that your partner is truly in a good mood with you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If she pulls the back of your hair and you're like, oh, that's nice, and then she's like, put the bins out! You're like... <laughs> I, f I feel like all the rage would come out, you know? Which way does the cutlery go in the dishwasher? It goes fork down! It goes fork down! I stand by all of that. After the break, I meet a lady who's going to help me try and find an Aussie Bigfoot. Yeah! Yes, that's it. It was a very hot day today, and we had a heat wave in the summer in the UK. And, yeah. <laughs> Fuck off, right? <laughs> it was 29 degrees, it was abs... <laughs> yeah, see, that isn't funny anywhere else in the world. <laughs> fucking 29, it's fucking barely room temperature. <laughs> it's 37 today, I kept looking at my phone, my phone's like, oh, fuck knows, fuck knows. <laughs> Get me in the shadow! Get me in the shadow! <laughs> Not only is it hot, it is massive. Almost three million square miles. And today, we're off to the rainforest to find a very, very special creature. There's lots of weird things I've done while I've been here. I've done normal things, but very strange things as well. It's, but it's like, I, I went yowie hunting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with the concept of a yowie. The Yowie. Have you seen him? I mean, that's a great look. You haven't seen him. According to Aboriginal folklore, the Yowie is an ape-like creature that lurks in the bush. Don't. It's an Aussie beast from a bygone era. In America, Bigfoot. In Scotland, the Loch Ness Monster. Here, Yowie. <laughs> Which I like, because a Yowie sounds like an Aussie word for a squeaky fart. <laughs> Bit of a Yowie there, John, eh? Our guide on this expedition is expert Yowie hunter June Hints. We're going to meet a lady called June who was scratched by a Yowie when she was a kid. Is a Yowie the same as a bunyip? I don't know what a bunyip is. What's a bunyip? It's a bit like a drop bear. Drop bears are like... Is that the, the sort of name that you give koalas to scare British people? Yes. Nice. OK, <laughs> so what you're suggesting is that the Yowie is, in fact, bullshit. I think you'll probably find that Yowie. Well, I hope we do. It's going to be exciting. Hello. Hi, Russell. How are you going? Oh, very well. Nice to meet you, June. I'm June, and here's the rest of the Yowie team. Hey, guys. How are you? And I hear that you're going to join us. We've had um, 
The property owners here have had some unusual happenings happening down near the river. Oh, really? Spooking the cows. And oh, really? So we've come up here to just check it out. This is very exciting. I've never, I've never seen a yaoi. What should I be looking for? Oh, wow. They're about eight foot. Right. They make a horrendous noise. How does that go? Well, I can't make the noise, but it's like, Oh, something so really like that. crazy. Okay. So, is this something we do re that you do regularly? We do actually. And have you ever had a sighting? Well, I've actually had a sighting. I've actually seen one when I was a kid. My sister and I, and uh, we were going off somewhere where we weren't meant to with our little cousin. Yeah. I was all of about seven, and we're kind of going down near the Billabong. Looked up. And there's this great big hairy creature in front of us. And I was just petrified and scared. Makes sense. So grab them to yeah. run off. And as I've done that, the hairy man's reached out. I don't know if he bit me or grabbed me, but I've got a nice big souvenir on my butt. Oh, really? Yeah. I said, that's so weird, because I played football when I was a kid, and I had a stud scrape down my right buttock, and it's got like a Nike tick on my ass. <laughs> And I said, do you want to see it? And she went, no. <laughs> but I was just trying to make conversation, but it looked a bit like I'd conjured up some weird reason <laughs> to show a 64-year-old woman my arsehole, which I hadn't. I showed it to my friend Rob once. I was like, look, that's a, like a night tick. It just made the day weird. Yeah. Do you know how you have to try and lure a yaoi in? See if you can guess. Chocolate is a good guess. <laughs> Hey? Tim Tams. Tim Tams is an excellent guess. Crate of beer. Crate of beer, fucking crate of beer, mate. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> a crate of beer and tobacco. That, <laughs> apparently, is the way you lure in an eight-foot man <laughs> that lives just outside <laughs> Brisbane. Tobacco. We normally do an offering, so we're going to leave it at the base of those rocks. We're okay? offering him fags. I'll there give you that. Go. You put it in your pocket, don't trust me. Um, now, see how we've got all the grass laying down? We just yeah. want to look for a pattern in the grass, like some weaving. We were there for a couple of hours. I said, I'm not sure he's going to turn up, June. And she went, you never know. <laughs> you know we leave in tobacco? Yes. Have you ever thought about sort of up in the game and maybe like a can of Foster's? Well, there is a story about someone who domesticated a yaoi and actually had a child to it. Whoa. And apparently this lady was quite amorous and she actually coaxed the yaoi with beer and sex and had a child. But that was back in the late 1800s when they didn't have DNA. Wow. Kind of and stuff like that. And guess what? I'm glad you brought that up. Look, here's a weave right here. Oh, there you go. We would have walked right on top of it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, so, that is exciting, but it's slightly more exciting that some woman's been banging Bigfoot, <laughs> isn't it? Well, yes. I mean, that is impressive, but you can't show me that after you've just told me that story, June. That blew my mind. Well, she I think that's why... She coaxed him with alcohol and sex. Well, beer, yes, homemade beer. <laughs> <laughs> Pale ale. And she was like, it's not working. I said, June, what do we need to do? She went, how good are you at screaming? I said, June, I'm pretty good. <laughs> well, I don't know what you mean. She went, nah, the yaoi likes a high-pitched noise. That excites him sexually. I said, June? <laughs> what do you want me to do? She said, we need to use you as bait. <laughs> I have my young daughter that I bring out, and I have a little coat that I put on her for a bit of bait, and I'm hoping that one day, Yowie might be watching, see this little white coat yeah. and that sort of stuff in young girl, and he might show himself long enough for us to take a snap. Nice. And, I mean, you've got to try everything. I mean, yeah. I'm too long in the tooth to think... Well, if you'd have to told me that, I'd have worn a skirt. Hey, look, you could actually wear the coat instead of Pop jazzy. Put the coat on. And she pulled out a furry jacket. <laughs> a furry white jacket, and she made me put it on. So this is going to make me um, arousing to the Yowie. That would be, I mean... After winning footage, wouldn't it? If I if the, a yaoi just snatched me up and I, and just rode me, and this is where I got really scared. <laughs> because what if it had worked? <laughs> like 
I'm not sure if I'm that committed to TV. Just go, Joe! She's like, yeah! Yeah! Ah! And June went, good. <laughs> but do it sexier. <laughs> now, I don't know. It's difficult to scream and be sexy, isn't it? Just, ah! Someone standing on your little toe. Yeah! Yes, that's it. Yes. Yeah! Did you hear that? I didn't. What did you hear? I just heard something at the back there. Oh God. So I'm just wondering if it wasn't, a, it wasn't if a Yowie zipper, was it? I don't know, but I just heard a little noise out there. Maybe I was too arousing. Maybe that's it, and you've got the jacket on after all. Okay. I'm not getting sexually abused by Bigfoot. I think we can all agree that was eventful. But I love people like that, people that are just living their life trying to find a hairy eight-foot man in the wilderness. In many ways, aren't we all trying to find a hairy eight-foot man in the wilderness? Nah, fair point. Next, we're off to Brisbane. I was walking around, I was in the Gold Coast, like, specifically speaking like that, you know, trying to... <laughs> put on an Aussie accent, you know, just so you can have a flat white, please. Thank you. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant out here and fucking having a lovely day. Have you got any thongs? I'd like some thongs. That's what I <laughs> wear on my feet. <laughs> because whenever anyone found out that I was English, they were on me like fucking zombies. <laughs> oh my God, what's happening? What's happening with the royal family? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Last night. It was the Harry and Meghan interview with Oprah. And all day, as soon as people find out that I'm English, they, they wonder, like, mate, what's going on? What's happening with the royal family? What's the Queen thinking? I don't fucking know. <laughs> She's not in my circle of friends. <laughs> I don't see her down the supermarket. You're right, Liz? No, I'm fucking not all right. Shit has gone fucking nuclear, Russell. Have you seen this shit? <laughs> How can I be racist? Some of my best colonies are black. This is... On the final leg of my Aussie expedition, I'm pondering the joys of childbirth. That must be an awful pregnancy. I'm hanging out with some mermaids. <laughs> we're all good, we're all fine. Children's yeah. entertainment with lube, you won't get yeah. that anywhere else. <laughs> no. <laughs> So they keep trying to make me go into the sea. Absolutely not, not in Australia. I don't really like going in England, and the worst that's gonna sort of push against you there is a turd. But here, the sea here is full of sharks. So what we're gonna do is compromise. We're gonna go to an aquarium where the sharks are behind perspex. Showing me around is animal trainer Emma Malik. That's not her, that's, I think he's called Fred. Here we are, Emma. This is my first time in an aquarium. I'm so excited I get to show you, Russell. Oh, really? I'm so excited. Um, let's just start with... I start with some of the basics. Fish. I saw a swordfish. Amazing, isn't it? Evolution is extraordinary. Look at that. He's actually got a sword. But the, the, the mouth and the It's eyes. actually a sword. So this guy's called Ryobi. So Ryobi's a... Um, type of saw. Oh, I see. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so it's, name. it's amazing, isn't it? It's just... That must be an awful pregnancy. <laughs> trying to squeeze a saw out. You'd opt for a cesarean, wouldn't you, if you had you a choice? You definitely would, well, and he could probably do it for you. He, he would. You know, I'm ready, Mum. I'm coming up. It's so fascinating, isn't it, to see what led to that. So what are we looking for? We are looking for a dugong. Have you ever seen one dugong? before? Dugong? I haven't, no. OK, so picture, like, kind of a big floaty potato. Yes. Uh, crossed with a mermaid. That's one. Crossed with a manatee. This is him here. This is pig. Their closest land relative is an elephant. And you can see the way, uh, the way he swims, why back in the olden days they mistook dugongs for mermaids. Really? Yeah. He's kind of got that cheeky little siren, you know, tail wiggle happening. There he goes. Oh, he's fast, <laughs> isn't he? He is. He's just showing off now. But mermaids have to think of being as beautiful. I mean, that's an, <gasps> that's an ugly mermaid. Do you know what I mean? Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. That is absolutely He's true. got a great personality. Yes. 
he'd have to. He looks like a fucking state. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right then. Sharks. Your favourite. This was very atmospheric. <laughs> this is the shark tunnel. This is it. God. So this beautiful Look at lake. These two. Jesus. I know. So this is Mary Lou and Stryker, our two females. There's a bloke in there diving. Yeah, you can see the divers are in there, they're paying no attention. Look at that, that's absolute insanity. I can't believe they're diving. Look at that. <laughs> absolute psychos. <laughs> Why are they in there? Well, you gotta clean it. They're... God, what a job. You think you'd be crazy, but we can, um, pre COVID, we used to invite members of the public to come and dive in here. Right. So you could just come along and spend some time with the sharks. I don't think I'd ever get to that level. You know? No, I'm just too scared, too English. So one of them, Mr. Murdoch, he uh, was born here and he has like the shark equivalent of scoliosis and his treatment is Botox injections. Really? So we're going to train him to take his Botox injections voluntarily. Wow. Do you want to stop at that? Will they give him lip filler? <laughs> Do you know, I found this out this week. You can get anal Botox. Did you know that? <laughs> what a world we live in, Per. How would you know? if you had an exhausted anus. Like, <laughs> I was trying to imagine, like, sort of maybe like a 50-year-old man, you know, he just got out of the shower and he's just reaching down to get his towel and his wife just caught a glimpse of it. She's like, oh, fucking hell, Roger. <laughs> it's your asshole. <laughs> it puts years on you, that thing does. I'd be amazed if my ass wasn't tired. I would be sad at myself if I was looking at my husband's ass like closely and was yeah. like, I used to love him into his ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now I want a divorce. Yeah. It's through here, isn't it? Anyway, off we go. <laughs> it's the final gig in Australia. I'm a little bit tired because last night in the hotel room next to me, a couple were making loud love all night. Wow! <laughs> you are beautiful people, but oh my god, the noises you made is... Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> in fairness, that is the noise I'd make if someone was in me, but... <laughs> I thought, I didn't know, are they shagging or are those crows outside? I've never... I assume they were having fun. It's difficult to tell. It's a lot... <laughs> I should have recorded it, but that would have felt weird. You know, if I got caught, I'm doing it for a TV show. One thing I've discovered while I'm here, Australians love the sea. You have an amazing relationship with the ocean. You'll do anything, sailing, surfing, paddle boarding, jet skiing, mermaiding. <laughs> Did you know this? Australia has mermaids. I've met them. I wasn't on mushrooms, I met <laughs> some mermaids. I don't know why seeing a lady sort of half woman, half fish, is kind of lovely, <laughs> but it really is. Actual mermaids, what a pleasure. My name's Russell, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hey, Hannah. Hi, I'm Brittany. Brittany, lovely to meet you. Can I sit down? Absolutely. Yes, of course. Cool. They look really snug. I was, I was, watching, I was watching you get in them, and it looked like there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of lube. Children's entertainment with lube, you won't get yeah. that anywhere else. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah. It looks like you're two girls on a bachelorette party and you've been left. I have done that before. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so um, I've been Mermaid Tempest since I was about 14 years old. Oh, really? So this is, like, I've been a mermaid for 10 years now. And we have a big fish tank on a trailer. And we take that to music festivals, medieval festivals, um, shopping centres, and we were underwater performers. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so I used to have a breath hold of three and a half minutes. How did you train yourself to not breathe for three and a half minutes? <laughs> Do you go full Wim Hof? For me personally, I just, um, I was always more comfortable in water. I have a lot of like physical body issues. Sometimes my body just decides to stop working. Don't worry, it won't today. Um, but like I had asthma and stuff as a kid and I was one of those people who always just like wanted to do everything. So I sucked at football, but I tried football, yeah. tried every sport, but I was always 
calm and confident in the water. Definitely was a water baby, but I didn't like the racing competitive side. Yeah. Um, I just liked how safe and happy I felt in water. So. And can yeah. you can you swim in these? Yes. Yes. That's what they're made for. Oh really? They're made for swimming. Yeah, you, presumably you've got to be quite good at butterfly. Yes. Is it yes. Sort of that yeah. kind it's of like a dolphin kit. Yeah. I actually have a spare tail here for you if you wanted to give it a go. Absolutely not, no. That's, that's, not, that's not how I want to die. Can I see you in action? Is that oh, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> that noise is awful, isn't it? It is. It's really well, scary. I mean, it just, moving. yeah, it, it's so funny. One of the things, we, one of the things we've just mermaids. discovered is, uh, there you go. There we go. It turns out mermaids queef, <laughs> which is not something I was aware of, but there's su suctioning to our legs. The suction going through there. And then every so often, <laughs> Brittany's queefing particularly loudly today. Quiet! <laughs> They're like, sorry about that. <laughs> no wonder they couldn't find Nemo. Oh, yes, the mermaid queefing again. That's definitely one of the weirdest things I've ever been part of in TV, in that we just, we just had to make sure we had the perfect sound for the queef of the mermaid. That was a big one. I mean, Jesus Christ. That was, a, that was a really big one. This is very exciting. So the mermaids are about to hit the water. Here we go. OK. It's a process. Oh, look at that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. It's a process. You all right? You OK? We're all good. We're all fine. Thanks, Russell. Jesus. It's, it's a whole thing. Do you yeah. want to get in? You sure you don't want to get in? I really want to watch you. Right, ready? Here we go. So the mermaids are... Oh, whoa, that was a big one. Oh, it looks really cool, though. It looks really great. So, oh, look at that, yeah. That's very cool. It's very cool. Very nice. I mean, let's not muck around. It's wildly sexual. That's the whole... I know we're meant to say it's for kids and that, but if you're a seven-year-old boy and you, you want mermaids at your party, I think we all know the game you're playing. You found a way to have pornography at your party as a seven-year-old. We finished Australia, all done. We did New Zealand, we did Australia, and now we're going to the airport, back to Britain. I feel so lucky to have been able to travel to New Zealand and Australia. Getting back on stage was just the best. Hello! Reconnecting with people, doing the ordinary stuff we take for granted. It's been life-affirming. Oh, it's nice and comfy, Janice. I don't give a shit. I've met some of the most brilliant humans on this glorious planet and experience things I'll never forget. From the weird to the wonderful. But now, it's time to go home. We're on our way home. Can't wait to see you. Hey. What a gig. Thank you so much for coming. It's fucking brilliant. Absolutely joyous. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah! See you later.